kia whanau. Hari kua takungaka kite kite a koutou. Very happy to see you all here this morning. Kanui te mihi, kanui te aroha ki a koutou katoa whanau. Um, wow, really is lovely to see you. This morning I got a, a, a word and I think it's for someone here as well. Um, and it's that scripture, do not be worried or anxious about anything, but pray about everything with praise and thanksgiving. Make your requests known to God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will overtake your heart and mind. And the bit I want to share with you is that you've been trying to look for understanding about the situation that you might be in. And God just says, I'll give you my peace. When I give you my peace, you forgo understanding. And so he just wants to pour out his peace in that situation for whoever that word is for. Amen. <clears throat> and I'm going to step out a little bit more as well. Is there a Irene in the house or Rene or a, um, it might even be your second name? Irene, Rene, I know. What about Louise or Lou or uh, anybody? Maybe this was meant for the 8.30 service. Sorry, Lord. It's good for my message because it was uh, all about hearing from God. Okay, well, let's go with Irene. If you're out there and you're watching and you hear this word, it's for you. You are creative. God has given you gifts and talents that are yours alone. Genesis 1, 26, 27. God has created us and made us to reflect him. You are a peaceful soul and he, this delights the Lord. This is how he is reflected in your life. He made you to be a peacemaker. Matthew 5, 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. You can bring calm into any situation by just your presence. Amen. Bless you, Irene. And this one's for Louise. Um, Louise, God says you are bold and courageous. God has made you this way. Wherever you go, he is with you. There is nothing the Lord wouldn't do for you. Jeremiah 32, verse 7. 17, our Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. He sees that you like to finish what you started and he loves this about you. And if there is a Jane, Janine, yes, no, not even your second name, no, yours, Bronnie, that'll be great. Your name means God is gracious, or in Hebrew, gift from God. You are a gift from God to others. I got a picture of a huge present wrapped in the best paper with the best ribbon, and we all know the feeling of wondering what's inside. Well, when people get to know you, it's like receiving a gift from God. This is not always how you see yourself, but this is how God sees you. He delights in you. Zephaniah 3.17 says, The Lord takes great delight in you. He quiets you with his love. He rejoices over you with singing. Amen. The title of my message is God is Calling. Can you hear him? You ever played with those or someone might still play with them? <laughs> yeah, yeah. About two and a half weeks ago, um, my granddaughter, Tao Kaido, who's two and a half, and I were in the supermarket. Now, this beautiful child comes into our bed every morning, and we have karakia, and one of the things I like doing is to teach her scripture. So that week, our scripture was, um, Jesus, said, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? So we're in the supermarket, and we're at the vegetable stand, and this is a child who, if you say hello to you, she's more likely not to say hello back. We're working on it, Fano, And um, <laughs> so that's sort of the child. And she's a beautiful little girl. Anyway, we're at the vegetable stand, and out of her mouth, as loud as you can hear, she says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the spirit. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I can't even look anywhere. It's really loud. And so we just said, mm, push her along. And then we get to the milk, and out it comes again, as loud, like just so surprising me. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the spirit. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, i got to go quickly. <laughs> so I'm just nodding to her. I didn't tell her, no, you can't say that. I just said, hmm, I didn't want to just try to distract her. Anyway, I get to the checkout, and I've forgotten something. And I, my first thought is, I've got to go and get it. But she's probably going to scream, nanny, nanny, don't go. But I said, I'm sorry, I've got to just go quickly. She's belted up in the chair and I just take off. I come back, and you know that plastic divide between the customer and the 
that thing, she is banging on it going, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Jesus. Ho I honestly, give me a big hole. Oh my gosh. It was, it was, anyway, I'm thinking, okay, get me out of here. We get out there. And I said, God, I don't know what that is. But anyway, it was probably for this message. Did God call her? Did she hear from God? Well, to make myself feel better, I said, yes, she did. <laughs> anyway, today I'm going to share a passage of scripture showing just how much God has to share in it with us and pray that everyone here today, even if you get one thing, um, that would be great. Okay, just one thing from this message today. And I love that song, and this is my prayer we had earlier. Thank you, Kahu, and um, your beautiful husband. <laughs> that was a beautiful word, Eli. <laughs> Thank you for your uh, ministry this morning. And out of there was a song, and this is my prayer. Lord, I simply come longing to just bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. Amen. Amen. Okay, 1 Samuel verse 3. And I'm going to do some speed reading here. All right, it's up there. You can follow me. The, the Lord calls Samuel. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. So go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And, he, and if he calls, you say, Speak, Lord. For your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears of it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about his sons. His sons made themselves contemptible, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son, he asked Samuel, here I am, tell me whatever the Lord said. And um, Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, he is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel, and he grew up, and he let none of his words fall to the ground. And that is the word of the Lord, and it's some pretty tough things in there as well. Amen? I'm just going to pop this down here. <clears throat> the book of Samuel opens with a mother's desperate prayer for a child in the entranceway of the tabernacle. Hannah's her name, wife of Elkanai. And here she is pouring out her heart in prayer. She vowed a vow. Give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. Hannah was brokenhearted and sobbing. That's when Eli, the priest, decided it was time to come over and straighten her out. Now in those days you had to be proper when you were at the tabernacle. He thought she was drunk. When he realized she wasn't, he prayed for her. Samuel was born. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her as young as he was and brought him to the house of the Lord. Now, Fano, she was leaving him there with Eli the priest to serve full time every day in the tabernacle. I wonder how Hannah talked to him to prepare him for service to God. What would you have said? Hey, kiddo, you can't stay with us anymore. I told God if he gave you to me, I'd give you back. Now, hers wasn't one of those, oh my gosh, I'm giving you back, I've had enough. This was her with, her, with her vow that she'd made to the Lord. And today's the day. You're going to their tabernacle. I'll come once a year, the word says. I'll come once a year, and I'll come and see you, and I'll bring you some new clothes. You know, God would never ask us to drop our child off at church for Pastor Norm and Jess to raise. Would they? Would they, Pastor Norm and Jess? 
No, you don't think so? No. But in Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7, he does call us as parents and caregivers to dedicate our lives to raising them to know the Lord and to train them up in the way they should go. And that's what a dedication service is as well, is where we as parents and as a church whanau say, you know, we're dedicating our children, we're setting them aside, we'll do everything we can to raise them up to know you, Lord. Amen? And Pastor Scott shared um, some of this last Sunday. So if you didn't hear the message, it's a really awesome message to, to hear, to um, listen to. God is calling. Can you hear him? Hello down there. I know Samuel was in the house every day. But if you can take your children to church regularly, that'd be good for them. Oh no, don't give them a choice. They're only six. That's a true story, Fano. Remember commercials where telephone companies are competing, checking the strength of the signal on a cell phone? The guy keeps asking the question, can you hear me? Good. Obviously, the point of the commercial is to emphasize how good signal strength is when it comes to cell phones. You got a good signal strength when it comes to hearing from God? Open line of communication with God. Can you hear him? Or are there dead spots, like between Tokomaru Bay and Rotoria? Did you know you can get a signal at Tiki Tiki, but Lance, not at Rangitukia. Is Auntie Lydia here? Yes, she is. Do you know Auntie Lydia? If you follow her, she has some beautiful kōrero on her. But she films it all and does it all, and then she goes to Tiki Tiki, and then she up, what do you call it? See, I don't even know. Uploads. She uploads it all. See? Just a joking, eh, Lydia? Maybe life is busy and finding time is hard. God is calling. Can you hear him? Hey there, I love you. You got a minute? Just a minute of your time? Or do we say, oh, I'll be there in just a minute, Lord? This passage in 1 Samuel marks the transition from a time when Israel was not hearing from God and hadn't for a few hundred years. They hadn't heard his voice almost for three generations. That's pretty sad, eh? You know, like, I think it was nearly 400 years. We know it's not a good thing to not hear from God. Proverbs 29, 18 says, Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. In other words, when we do not hear from God, society tends to go from bad to worse. Agree? But that shouldn't be the case to us as Christians. I'm an optimist, full of faith, So regardless of what's happening, God is still good, he's still all-powerful, and he is still in charge. Amen? We are not called to reflect the times we are living in, and I do feel very blessed to live in Aotearoa. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. At our school, I just feel like I rejoice. Every assembly, and we have a couple a week, we've brought back um, our national anthem, and I just, like put my hand there and say, God defend New Zealand, Aotearoa. And it just feels so good and right that our tamariki are even just singing this. Amen. Truth is, we need to hear and know God's word. Amos 8, 11. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will send a famine through the land. Not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of God. Man, that's pretty sad, eh? But I just want you to know that famine is over. It's been over since the days of Samuel. God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. Holy Spirit is 100% right here, ready and waiting to talk to us. God is calling. Can you hear him? Kia ora. Hello there. I've got some exciting news for you. Can you hear me? Here I am. I know how to bless you. Nope, your blessing's not over there. You want to go where? You want to leave this church? If you are, it's got to be a good reason. Nope, that's not the girl for you. Or the boy. Let's start looking at Eli's place in this story. Eli is important in this story. Eli was the was 
one Old Testament person with a serious problem. The recognition and respect he earned in public did not extend to him his handling of his private affairs. Bluntly, he was a poor parent. The Bible tells us he failed to discipline his sons or correct them when they, were sin when they sinned, even when God told him how and warned him on more than one occasion. Now, they were adults serving as priests. And God put it on Eli to discipline his adult sons. You know, no one wants their parents, adult, their parents as an adult to be disciplining them, do we? No. You know, we don't always get it right, but God is there to help us. If we don't correct behavior when our children are young, it's a lot harder when they're older. An undisciplined or undiscipled child is not good company. An undisciplined or undiscipled child really may find that they don't have many friends. Now, Pastor Scott shared last week that sometimes we see behavior in our children that we don't like. And in his example, he looked at his own behavior first to see what he might be doing to exasperate that behavior. And he said he found it. And he is so right. That is really the first place to look if we're wanting to correct children's behavior. Amen? 1 Samuel verse 1 to 3. The story begins not with God speaking, but with God's silence. Look at verse 1. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. Now Samuel may have been about 12 years old here, but we don't really know for sure. But we do know he was a boy. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There was not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could hardly see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Exodus 27, 21 tells us, The priests were required to keep the lamps burning in the temple every night from evening until morning. Yes, the word of the Lord was rare, but God had not forgotten his people. He would never give up or forget you. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And this is important to note, because when the light did go out, it was daylight. God would never leave you in the dark. Shine bright in the dark places for the one who is so worthy. The nation of Israel was in a time of spiritual darkness. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. We can see some of that happening in our world today. There was no word from God, and it was in this context that God called Samuel. Our world has the areas of spiritual darkness. God is depending on us to shine. He's calling. Can you hear him? What's he asking you to do in these spiritual places of darkness? I believe simply to shine your light, be the best version of Jesus, love people, do the right thing. Verses 4 to 6. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. I love this scene. Samuel is alert. He is responsive. He is obedient. Maybe he's a new Christian. He goes running to Eli. Here I am, you called me. Eli says, it wasn't me, go back to bed. So Samuel goes back to bed and the Lord calls him again. Again, the Lord calls Samuel and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me, my son, Eli said. I did not call, go back and lie down. And Samuel's thinking, what the heck's going on? Am I going crazy? I'm sure I'm hearing something or someone. We know who is calling Samuel, right? But Eli just doesn't get it. Eli is not attentive to what's happening. Maybe Eli has been serving too long. Is that a thing? Pastor Norm, is that a thing? Pastor Jess, is that a thing? Was it his age? And had he just become weary? He had served all his life, and he had had a huge responsibility, which is fair enough. He'd been overseeing all the worship in Israel. Overworked and underpaid. Maybe he just felt like giving up because he wasn't able to stop his sons from sinning. It happens. Why did Samuel not know it was God? We find out in verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Wow, there's hope. There's hope. God had never spoken to Samuel in this way before, and Samuel did not realize that God was calling him. There are times when we all have not recognized God's voice, yes? 
including myself. After God's word was revealed to him, Samuel would learn to recognize God's voice. But for now, he just assumed it must be Eli, and Eli just sent, kept sending him back to bed. Verse 8 and 9, the Lord called Samuel a third time. Now, three times in our household, we take two... In our household, we take turns at cooking. Dinners are all ready and you call out nicely. Dinner's ready. You know, you've been slogging, you've been had a hard day's work and you've come home, it's your turn to cook and you cook it with all the love in the world and you go, dinner's ready and no one comes. And you call again, dinner's ready. And you know what, like still no one comes three times. Oh my gosh, what the heck's going on? Dinner's ready and there's nobody listening. God is calling. Can you hear him? Or maybe you are so hungry, you are already at the table. Bless you for listening. Our spiritual walk can be like that. God doesn't get cross like the cook, though. He's got lots of patience. The Lord called Samuel a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. And Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in the place. Like, being in that place, you just know, oh, my gosh, God is going to turn up. He's actually going to turn up. I just have to wait here. he's, He's turning up. But actually, he's already there waiting. He's always already there. Amen. God is calling. Can you hear him? Samuel lay down in his place to wait. And it was the same place. Hello there. I waited for you this morning, last night, yesterday and the day before. I'm still here, same place, any time. Verse 10, the Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. So how did Samuel respond to the call? Well, he responded just like Eli told him. Then Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. My gosh, that must be such sweet incense to the Lord's ears. Speak, I am listening. Speak, Margie, says Lance, I'm listening. Speak, Mum, I'm listening. Ah. Blah, blah. What a great prayer to pray before, pray any time before hearing or reading God's word, listening to a message. Samuel asks God to speak, and God spoke. It probably was not the message Samuel wanted to or expected to hear, but it was the word God had for him. How often does God speak and we say, "Uh uh-oh, didn't want to hear that. Let's look at verses 11 to 14. Samuel had to tell Eli things were not going to work out for him. There was no turning back. But good news though, that does not have to be the case for us. This is written like the rest of the Bible, so we have the opportunity not to make the same mistakes. Honour your parents. Eli's sons didn't. There will always be consequences for sin, but we have a way out. Eli didn't. Our way, his name is Jesus. A heart of repentance is the key. We can turn from sin. Sin is anything that separates us from God. We are all guilty of it. Jesus took upon himself the sin of the world. He died for you and me even before we were born. And because of that, we have freedom from sin. Praise God. And we can access freedom this way. We repent. I was doing this. Now I am not. I was a liar. Now I'm not. I stole. I tithed to drugs and alcohol. Now I don't. I've just given you a nice list. I am sorry, Lord. Forgive me. He does, and he remembers it no more. So don't let your sin and past define you. God is calling, regardless of your past. Can you hear him? Hello there. My love is unconditional. You don't have to do anything to earn it. I have a great plan for your life. But you have to choose me. Even Paul, the apostle, when he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus, he, if you didn't know who Paul was, he was a Pharisee who persecuted Christians without mercy. He was actually a murderer. 
and he encountered Jesus on the way, on the road to Damascus. And that was like the conversion of all conversions. And when that happened, he just did a 180 degree turn right there, right then, and went on to follow Jesus. And, you know, that can be for all of us. That is in the Bible as an example for us. No matter where we are, we can turn 180 degrees. Amen. God broke the silence of those days when he called Samuel and gave him this word. What would Samuel do with this word? Remember, he was only a boy, and this was a pretty heavy message for a young boy to deliver to an aging priest. What do you do when you get a word? Sometimes God gives me a word, and all he wants me to do is pray. Sometimes he gives me a word to encourage others. Sometimes he just says, take someone a kai. If you feel God is giving you a word of direction or rebuke for yourself or someone else, please, if you're in this whare, please run it past a pastor or leader first. When speaking to us, God almost always confirms his word again and again. Three times he called Samuel. Verse 15, Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house and he must have been pretty exhausted by this time. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli called him and said, tell me everything, don't hide anything. So t Samuel told him what the Lord had said and Eli said, he is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. Eli's response was very humbling. God is calling. Can you hear him? Hey there. That must have been hard to do. I love the way you received that. I love the way you put that right. That's awesome. You apologized. Look what it did. I have heard from God throughout my life, from something as small as there's bread on the table. I've gone into the, I've, I'm stopping at the, soup, at the dairy to get some bread. I get out of the car, I hear a voice, there's bread on your back doorstep. I carry on walking to the dairy door and I hear it again, there's bread on your doorstep. And so I turn around, hop back in the car, tell the girls, what they say, where's the bread? The bread is on the doorstep at home. And sure enough, we get home and there's the bread. That's one time I heard from the Lord. This time, I didn't quite hear, recognize the voice of God. A friend of ours was on his deathbed and the family called and said, asked us if we would like to go up and say goodbye. So Lance and I went to their place and um, he was in a coma. He, was, he, he had been in the coma all that day. And um, we went in, I stroked his arm, told him how much I cared, how much I loved him. And he woke up and he saw us and he said, Marky, Lance. And it was just so beautiful. And we got to say goodbye and then we left and I said, Lord, thank you for allowing us to say goodbye. He said, that's not what I sent you there for. It took me a long time to get over that because he sent us there to minister to him. And we didn't. And so I made my peace with God and said I wouldn't do that again. I would recognize his voice in that. And so, and I did. He gave me an opportunity a few years later. And another, <coughs> this, this is just about hearing from God. And... Um, I've, most, some of you, or a lot of you have heard this story before, but I tell you it again because it has a sequel. So it would be six or so years ago, um, seven years ago, a couple came to Lance and Well, they actually came to the church, and we were asked to go and pray for them. They just received um, uh, something from the doctor to say that she couldn't have, they couldn't have babies. That was it. There was no more. So they reached out. They weren't in church, but they had some faith. So we went. I asked the Lord for a scripture. He gave me one in Romans that says, Against all hope, Abraham and hope believed and became the father of many nations. And though his body was as good as dead, he believed without wavering in his faith that God would do what he would do. And so we took that message, prayed with them. And then about, I don't know, we're going to put six or eight weeks later, I woke up with this thought, this scripture, Rejoice, O barren woman. And I thought, Okay, wow, what am I going to do with that? And then it, I, it was the next day as well. So there it was, God, what do you want me to do with this? I want you to let, her name was Kim, I want you to let Kim know that this is for her. And I want you to tell her that I want her to go and buy an item of clothing and I want her to pray over this clothing. And I said, God, no way. There's just no way. She'll think I'm crazy. I am not doing that. I am Margie. I am not doing that. There's just no way. And do you know what? I held on to for three weeks, 
this just keep coming. I want you to write this. I want you to do this. I said, God, I'm not doing it. That's just stupid. That's just find another way. I'll, send, I'll give her the scripture, but I'm not giving her the rest. But anyway, I wrote a letter, and it started, Dearest Kim, um, I don't want you to think I'm some crazy Christian woman. That's how I started the letter. But I got this portion of scripture, and I felt that the Lord say to do this. And I thought, okay, I've written the letter, Lord. I'm going to Fare. I got in the car. I drove there. I could not post it for two weeks. I could not put it in her mailbox. I was just disgusting before the Lord, I'm sure. But anyway, he was so kind. But he just, it was a gentle prompt. It wasn't anything serious. I just, he just gently said, I want you to do this. Anyway, I popped it in her Eventually, two weeks later, I popped it into her mailbox and I just left it there and I just thought, oh my gosh, the only thought I had was for myself. It wasn't for her. Terrible. Anyway, about some weeks later, quite a few weeks later, on a Sunday going home from church, there was a card in my mailbox and it said, Dear Maggie and Lance, we wanted you to be the first to know. We're on our way to the hospital. It could have been in there from Friday. We're on our way to the hospital. Um, We've taken five pregnancy tests for the last few days and it's positive and we're going up to to have a scan and I'll let you know, long story short, um, they had a little boy and they've gone, they've since also had a little girl. (laughs) Amen, praise God. If I'm, you know, for me, that was like stepping out thinking, oh my gosh. Now, not everyone's going to get that, okay? So it's all good. But the sequel to that is in the last school holidays, Te Kaida and I were at the Olympic pool swimming and there was another lady in there with two little ones, maybe one and three. They were, well, they were one and three. And I said to her, oh, you look familiar. Or she just, and she said to me, first of all, I just want to apologize to you. And I said, oh, my gosh. She said, I want to say I'm really sorry that I didn't come and tell you our good news. And I said, remind me. She said, well, at least four years ago, I came to you. Kim, had to, Kim is my friend, and she told me that you had prayed for her, and I came. And like, I'm telling you, when I remember now, it was like 10 minutes of prayer. She came, explained that they had just heard that they couldn't have babies. She had, been, she had miscarried X amount of babies. And then she said, um, These, after your prayer, I got pregnant pretty well straight away. And here is um, the babies. And, you know, this has nothing to do with me, really. This is God. This is, this is the goodness of God. Amen. And so I just felt like I had listened. I had written that. He was obviously trying to teach me something. And yeah, so I just praise the Lord for hearing from him. Amen. Let's close out the passage, picking up at verse 19. The Lord was with Samuel and he grew up and he let none of his words fall to the ground. I like that phrase. He let none of his words fall to the ground. Remember chapter 3 began by saying that God's word was rare at that time. It ends by saying that through Samuel, God's word came to all Israel. There was a new prophet in town, and his name was Samuel. God is calling. Can you hear him? Hey there, can I come be part of your whānau? Can you take me to your workplace? Take me to school? I can work through you in Tairawhiti. I've got big plans to save a nation. But can we start with your lonely neighbour? Or that hoha fella you keep avoiding? We got this, Fano. In closing, here are just six points I want to emphasize, and you can, if you can take one of them home, that's wonderful. God desires to speak to us. God has always taken the initiative in speaking to man. We just need to learn to listen. When God speaks to us, we get something that's going to make a difference for the better, always. God speaks to children. Help your children, your grandchildren, to recognize God's voice. Samuel had been taught the things of God before he heard directly from God. Amen? And when I was writing about Te Alkari, it reminded me of my Kali, who is 29. So she was about three or four, and we were coming out of the bookshop, and we just, she just, we, this lady was coming in, and Kali and the lady sort of eyeballed each other, And Carly said to her, do you love Jesus or do you love the devil? (laughs) And I thought that was one time there should have been a hole. Honestly, that was just so bad. (laughs) But, however, someone said this morning, well, that thing would be with that lady forever. I said it would. (laughs) Whatever that moment was for that person, 
um, I just grabbed my daughter. Now, I didn't say anything to, our, to, to Al Qaeda about evangelizing in that moment, but I did say to Carly, let's find another way of saying that to somebody, honey. Anyway. Yeah. It was funny. Well, it wasn't really at the time, but anyway. Teach your children to know the word of God. You know, pre-COVID, our pre-COVID, we haven't been able to get together, but our kids here in the house, like, we would have times with kotahitanga that our kids would get a word. There'd be 12 kids up here, and they'd all have spent time with the Lord, and over a couple of weeks, and they'd all get a word about healing and whatever, and they'd deliver it on a Sunday morning, and oh my gosh, there wasn't one child that nobody stood up for. You know, there was everything that they call, so yeah, teach our kids. Amen. We don't always hear immediately, like Samuel, like Samuel, we don't hear immediately because we need instruction and a little more time to recognize God's voice. And that's okay. Samuel did not recognize God's voice until Eli explained it to him. Pastors and leaders, people you trust are here to help. Join a life group, ministry. Make sure you hang out with people who will strengthen your walk with God so you learn how to recognize his voice. Number four, God can speak to us in the dead of night. The Lord called out when everyone was asleep, when it was quiet, when Samuel wasn't on his phone. We live in such a noisy, busy world that some of us have become afraid of silence. Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Number five, God speaks to us through his word, through people, an impression, a quiet voice, through our children, through our circumstances, a thought, through our husband or wife, through music, nature, dreams and visions, to name a few. He will find a way. Just wait on him. Number six, God is patient with us. I love the way God keeps coming back to Samuel in this passage. Four times God came and called Samuel's name before Samuel finally got it. God is remarkably loving and patient. If we approach God, the Lord with a sincere and listening heart, he will speak to you and you will hear him. You may not get it all the first time, but keep coming back and wait. God is always communicating. God will never stop calling you, regardless of your age. He will never give up on you. He's got big plans for you, the best plans. And just to close, I just want to pray for those who feel they haven't heard from God for a while. And I'm just going to pray, just bow our heads. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that you are always there. We thank you, Lord, that you're always talking to us. But Lord, I come against anything, anything at all that might be hindering our hearing of you, Lord God. Father, be it unforgiveness or bitterness, anger, resentment, Lord, disappointment, hurt. We just break that now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, maybe where you've been speaking and your voice is not recognizable. Father, I pray you would bring clarity right there, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, if there is sin, Father, thank you for exposing it. Purely, Lord, because then you can deal with it. You can help. And you can bring freedom, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, for those waiting for an answer, Father, I know that you are faithful that you are always good, and Lord, that your timing is always perfect. And so, Father, I thank you that as people wait to hear from you, Lord, that you will always answer. And Lord, it might not always be the way that we think, but Father, I thank you that we'd recognize it when you are speaking to us. Thank you, Jesus.